Welcome back to the Star Sector. JC here. And today we're going to do a couple of things. One, because I realised uh, when I was editing the last set of uh, episodes, I didn't explain the UI at all or anything that I was doing. So I kind of need to go and do that. And we also need to um, streamline what's on the planet because we need as much profit as we possibly can because we need to build some more ships before we go and do uh, the next stage which will be explained when I do this kind of because I basically just thought of the idea of doing like a roleplay log yes we're doing we're going back to what I did in um, one of the Rimworld series the last major Rimworld one not the origin story well, well, I pulled them all into the meeting room and had a meeting. Well, in this case, it's going to be slightly different. <clears throat> We're definitely, definitely going to be taking the uh, you know what out of a certain sci fi franchise. Right. JC's Lock. Date June 1st. Cycle 206. We finally arrived. At our fabled world we've been so long looking for. And it was the mother load. It was, as far as we can tell, a secret world hidden long ago by Dial Avionics. The, the telling thing was we found all their blueprints. I'm pretty sure they're going to be pissed when they find out. So uh, I highly doubt there's going to be any help Corward. Before they found out, we had a little trip and we went to go and visit Diable Avionics to see if they had anything interesting in their open market and they all they had was stuff that we could already make. To say I was mildly disappointed is an understatement. I was looking for some fancy things that I could steal and then use against them later on, but you know. <clears throat> technicalities so I returned back but while we were out exploring we did we did check out the local systems and one system you know, one system over we did find an absolute truckload of planets so we're probably going to colonize somewhere in there and make full use of both of these systems because other than this one planet this place is a bit shit. But I guess one planet makes up for it. This planet that we're currently uh, residing on will probably produce all of the food and organics and stuff like that. But the other planets are probably gonna be uh, where we really set up shop. For now, we'll make do on this one. The other thing we did, one of the other nearby systems, happened to contain a derelict vessel. We approached it and with some magic from the engineer, managed to salvage it. Inside, it confirmed our suspicions and all of those weird rumours that were going around on all the pubs, on all the star, on all the stations. The, uh, the strangers at the southern end of the known sector. They're real. It was one of their ships. An Auroran ship by the, by the names of it. Zimus Corwoods isn't going to be of much help to us. I guess the next plan would probably be to make um, moves towards them. See if they're going to be more amenable to us. Or at the very least, get them on good terms. Because it's not going to take very long before the usual rivalries and the Corwoods get turned to our small little faction. At which case we'll get crushed. End log. Right, there you go. That's the plan. We are going to eventually... 
go to the sector. And I look down here, we're going to head down here. So the Auroran Federation. There is a way of getting in with them. So we can follow that little path and I have I'll explain when I put my own limiters on so that we don't progress too quickly unless shit goes sideways <laughs> and then I go right brakes are off <laughs> but before we head down there I need to fix the planet because why do I need to repair my ships this is one supply because there are some things here that are we're not making enough profit basically patrol hq good defense yes <clears throat> battle station right mining needed senate it is costing over eleven thousand for no real good and it's going to give me free money I didn't pay to put it in. That's 40% of its cost. Yes, it costs a lot to build the Senate, but it is a useful building later on. Right now, I need as much money as I can get my hands on. So shut that thing down. How much credits we make per month now? Stop. I do kind of, I do need to upgrade you to a Megaport, but for the time being, you've got enough access. <clears throat> We're relatively close to the other colonies, as you can see by a plus twenty-three percent due to proximity from other to other colonies. That is not other colonies in general. That is core. That is proximity to the core worlds. Fleets is a hundred and forty-one percent. Why? Stability. We're very very stable here. Defense isn't great because these aren't upgraded, but. Is good enough. <laughs> we are not meeting our need, but it's almost there, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's always going to be a problem. <laughs> but for the time being, we are fine. We're making a decent amount of credits per month. Which is what we need. Because, uh... It's time to look at custom blueprints, basically. And we can't make a Storm-class battle carrier. Oh dear, because... Well, yeah. We can't. It costs too much for our production capacity. Oh dear. What a shame. I wasn't going to be making anything anyway. The thing, only thing I might have possibly wanted to have made was a gust light cruiser, and we can't make that. I guess, ah, uh, yeah, I'd have to have another planet. That also feeds into the fact that I mentioned in the log that there was that second system with loads of, loads of planets. I kind of want to make both systems relatively standalone it'll cost more in the long run but it'll actually help with the production capacity I make a pocket gus which is actually a destroyer which is alright yeah. I kind of want the gus because it actually has a really it can have a zonking great laser on it yeah there's one large as you can see I can't actually move the mouse at the moment right at the bottom the important bits are right in the bottom. The hull mods. One's a service gantry. That's very important. That's a, that's a funky one. And the other one is going on large hybrid one. It's got a zonking great large turret on it. Very nice one. And one of the things you can do is... Um, where are you? Not missile weapon. Yeah, no, a zonking great siege laser. Yeah, you can mount one of these things as a zonking great siege laser. Accuracy poor, doesn't matter if it's just in 
laser. So yes, I want to get into those. I wasn't really going to use cruisers from this faction. I was going to use Roaring cruisers. That was the plan. But the Gust is a very, very good one. Pocket Gust. Hmm. Is that this frontline destroyer? Which I assume just has a lot more. Noisy. <sighs> Noisy buggers. Right. Yes, it's got a a lot more armor than like everything else in the entire place. So yeah, that's a good one. Dampening wave. What is that? Generates a protective wave, reduces incoming damage, propelling the ship in the desired direction. Interesting. Dodge, but also take less damage while dodging. Hmm. Frontline destroyer able to take a punch and retaliate in kind. This older design has been modernized consistently and is still appreciated by DA's captains and crews for its spacious design an understandably brutality. An understated <laughs> brutality on the battle. Yeah. Right, stitch this. One medium missile, two small universal, seven small hybrid. <laughs> Could be an interesting one. Um, I'll have one. We do need to pad out the frigates though. That's the key thing. We're gonna take a loss this month as well, due to the cost. But I want to get the fleet established so that we can actually go and do things. Where is it? Is it the vapor? Ah, evasive maneuvers, yeah. That's a tuck. Yeah, pretty much that. I want two more of those. Two of those. Right, it's going to cost a lot. Total order is 77. We only make about 30. But I do have a lot of money at the moment, which is cool. Uh, F5 is a quick save. Well, it's actually safe, but yeah, it'll, it'll bug me about it. Right, uh, kind of need to wait until that cycle so we can pick them up. So what I'm going to do is I will bring you back when we've got the ships. Or alternatively, I can use this time to explain the friggin' UI like I said I was going to. Yes. <clears throat> Perfect. We have here money. This is the uh, supplies I have and how many I use per day. The amount of fuel I have and how much I'm using. Uh, you only use fuel in hyperspace. This is burn level. Each ship has its own burn level. Most military ships have a burn level of eight. You can only move at the burn rate of the slowest vessel. <clears throat> Hence why it says there, burn level of slowest ship is 8. 100% for sustained burn. I'll explain that guy. This is your combat readiness. As combat readiness goes down, ships will have malfunctions. If it gets too bad, they will get critical damage. If it keeps going, they die. You lose ships due to no combat readiness. Not a good thing. 
Oh, repair. Here we go. Sensor range. This is how far you can see things. This is how far they can see you. The sustained burn transponder on is just a plus a thousand. And sustained burn does that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move across. Sustained burn. This is basically you jig your engines for long distance travel. And it says the first line there. Switch the drives of all ships in the fleet to a mode suited for long distance travel. The fleet has to stop briefly to make the switch over. Emergency burn. You basically just push the big red button and panic. It does consume fuel and will reduce combat readiness until you turn that particular part of it off with a talent. It's a point on leveling up. Transverse jump allows you to jump into hyperspace from wherever the hell you like. It costs fuel to do it to jump into hyperspace, but to come out, not so much. When you saw us approaching some of the planets before, there was those little blobs, probably only about that big. Those are the ones you can use to transverse jump in at a non stable point there jump into real space only you can't come out via those unless you pay the salvage yeah if there's salvage there you just salvage for it active ping pushes up your sensor range so you can detect things further away you can only move you can move very slow Interdiction Pulse is to pull someone out of Sustained Burn. As it says, disrupts, uh, disruption interrupts any movement related abilities. Very annoying. Going dark. The detectability is halved and you can only move slowly. Moving slowly is regarded as half of that of the slowest ship. So it basically halves your movement speed. This is a command, I can push that and this thing flying around will follow me for a little bit. And this is a mechanic from a mod. It allows you to separate ships off and give them commands and they go do stuff. I've never used it. Maybe I will, maybe I'll. And transponder. Um, if you're in normal systems, especially core ones, with your transponder off, they will bitch at you immensely. Turn your transponder on. Unless, of course, <laughs> you're hostile to them and you want to just slip through. Sometimes you have to do that. Distress call is a distress call. If the shit has hit the fan, you've run out of fuel, you can do that. Hopefully somebody helpful arrives, otherwise it's pirates. I have no idea about that one. a loss but we've got stuff now I'll pause it this is for making stations it doesn't say that there isn't one it just says we're too far away so you're probably fine because it's moderate it says mining stations have moderate ore and rare ore resources so no positives no negatives that's what moderate is so it's relatively good, and that will probably be this system's mineral supply. That is what I will be setting up over the top of the gas giant in the other system. It allows you to collect uh, the resources from the gas giant without having all of the horrible, nasty negatives of trying to set up a colony on a gas giant. Don't ask how you can set up a colony on a gas giant. Just don't ask. And that's just a... You can colonise an abandoned one. That is the UI. You've got your, your buttons here, obviously. They pretty much say what they do. 
actor pulls up your character screen. The one that stops you from taking damage from an emergency burn is... There you go, that one. So it's right at the bottom. You get more fuel from... You can scavenge more fuel and the emergency burn ability no longer reduces combat readiness. Most of these abilities say what, do what they say on the tin. These ones, more maneuverability, more top speed. I elithed it because it allows you to use your boosted speed at any any flux level. Flux will be explained in a little bit. And once again, this allows me to dissipate hard flux while my shields are active. You generate hard flux when your shields take damage or absorb damage. These are no void shields, they don't just shunt it into the warp. And that actually unlocks the ability to use transverse jump. Except that we already had transverse jump due to the start that we picked. But it does increase the burn bonus of sustained burn. I didn't actually explain sustained burn, but yes, it, it, it just basically just doubles your maximum speed. But it does make it you're less maneuverable. Bit of a bugger. So what we're going to do is we're going to go pick up our new ships. Hello, thank you. Um, I is for your inventory screen. F is for your fleet. R is for refit. So we go F. Take. Yeah, they don't always come out with uh, no D mods. Uh, something I forgot about. What have you got? Damaged weapon melts and degraded shields. Well, okay. Take, take, take. Take, take. Under strength. Of course we're under strength. Just rearrange your, your fleet. Crew slash cargo is the I button. What it does is when it does this, when you make ships, it gives you enough crew to man them, some fuel, and some supplies. All free. Very nice. So we should now be able to go back to the fleet, and there you go. Magically, we can run everything again. Now what we need to do, we need to go into here. Expanded missile racks. What are you? Auto fit, because I have no clue what this will be doing here. Right, auto fit, you basically just select that and uh, no, we don't. That's the assault variant. Stand one has a, a revolver, banished torpedo, barnacle beam, repeater, that's point defense. Right. What happens is when you build, when they build a ship, it automatically comes armed with what it's supposed to have. Those are point defense. Integrated ballistic interception system. Yes, there's point defense. That is also Barnacle Beam is a point defense. What are you, anti-shield? Basically it says it in its primary role. Those are anti-shield as well. Anti-shield. Anti-shield. There's an awful lot of anti-shield. LRM system. I'm not particularly sure I like this particular design. Standard and standard. Good. Yes, 
that is the version of these ships I prefer. Ships with D-Mods, even if they're fully repaired, have some actual damage on them. You can get S-Mods, which you built in. The standard things. Any of the normal mods you can put in, you can just build them into the hull. They don't cost any points. It's called ordnance points in this. This is what allow limits you what you can and cannot do with a vessel. This has an ordnance points of 50. It's a balancing mechanic. That's all you really need to realize for that one. <laughs> right. Briefly went over this. Yeah. Basically, a weapon has a primary role. Um, what they're good at. Kinetic damage tends to be good against shield. High explosive damage is better against armor. And virtually everything is good against hull. There are a few exceptions, but... Energy... Is good against everything. Universally, it's 100%. There's no benefits, there's no negatives to it. It is just flatline. Perfect. They tend to be more power hungry though. We'll deal with flux. There you go, see, firing everything, it will generate 475 flux per second. Its flux capacity is this. If you go over your flux capacity, you overload and are defenseless. You can't even do anything. You naturally dissipate flux at a certain rate. You can actively vent it, which double, there you go. Flux is dissipated at double the normal rate when actively venting. While actively venting, you cannot do much. You can move, and that's about it. You can't even raise your shields. Yeah. As it was also saying, just above that last line, absorbing damage with shields generates hard flux, which cannot be dissipated while the shields are turned on. You can dissipate it when you turn the shields off, unless you have the talent that I have, which allows you to dissipate a small amount of it while the shields are still up. As you can tell, I tend to build mine for the uh, the very subtle approach of shoot me, not my ships. I are tank. I tend to go for the big chunky vessels. Funny that one. Other than that, you've got your top speed. Brigades tend to be very, very quick, but particularly well armoured. Destroyers, well that's actually enhanced because I'm in it. There you go. Speeds drop dramatically when you start getting into destroyer uh, and cruisers. You get even slower when you get to capital vessels. 45 is rather speedy for a capital vessel. Just to put that into perspective. Just putting things into perspective there. Yeah. I don't know why it gave some of these things to them. I don't care. There is one thing on the planet we can do to get rid of these. But uh, I'm going to repair here quickly. Manage the colony. Something I do want to install on this this colony? Yeah, probably this colony, at least at first. Will be... The restoration docks. It allows you to remove demods for cheaper than it would normally be. But it does take a month to do so. Fair enough. 
but all the things on a colony cost a lot of money. We now need to try and start generating money. This is where the second part of the plan comes in. Save it here because we're about to finish anyway. Second part of the plan is to make good and get in with the Aurora Federation. They will be supplying the money. Basically, just going to be doing jobs for them, like a dirty little errand boy. <laughs> Needs must. Money will go into this, and we will funnel most of it back to the home system. And this one with the 13 unsurveyed things. This being a interesting one, seeing if there's any volatiles there. If there isn't much in the way of volatiles there, it's useless because that's what you use to make fuel. There is another gas giant actually, so that may be a better option just in case. Toxic world, uh, we do have um, terraforming, so we can fix some of these things, like toxic can be fixed. A lot of volcanic, irradiated. That's an asteroid belt, so I could put a station there if I wanted to. If none of these particular worlds have decent mineral deposits. Volcanic worlds tend to have better metal deposits so they tend to make very good production worlds if you can get around the fact that they are hot as hell we'll be dealing with that over time we need the money so in the next episode we're going to make a trip quick little trip down and we're going to do some um some work try and start the ball rolling on getting in with the Aurora Federation. That will be next time. I tried to make this as short and concise, but um, it's very much a, a, an info dump. Things will probably start to make sense as we see them, especially the combat side and flux and all of that. Notably, you'll probably hear me swear and go bugger I've just overloaded <laughs> as my ship just sits there doing nothing sparking away to itself promptly followed by being shot to death normally but on that note thank you for watching until next time this is JC